Hey everybody, bacteria proves evolution. I got my own copy of Dawkins' latest greatest show on earth. I'm about two thirds of the way through it so far and uh, if you haven't read it yet I think that um, many people would be quite uh, quite enjoy it but that's not what this video is about I'm not doing a review of this book but I am uh, referring to something in the book that Dawkins uh, refers to back in 1988 uh, Dr. Richard Lenski of Michigan State University began an experiment using the bacteria commonly known as E. coli and basically what they uh, were doing was using this bacteria as a method to show evolution at work. Now imagine if we could, uh, to steal a line from Dawkins book, if we could find a Lucy and in a frozen state and reanimate her today. Well basically what uh, Lenski and his team did using E. coli was exactly that. Now, I'm going to be reading from notes here, so um, it's going to take a while. <laughs> so E. coli, uh, as we all know, is very common. There's billions upon billions of E. coli bacteria out there uh, every day, including in our own bodies. Uh, they reproduce using cell division, and so therefore they're very easily clonable and you're able to make large uh, identical numbers of these bacteria in a short amount of time. Uh, so when in 88 when Lenski started this experiment what he, he did with his team was they took 12 flasks identical flasks and they so-called infected each one of these flasks with E. coli bacteria now, all of the flasks contained the same uh, nutrient solution, which was, um, uh, or should I say, included glucose as the primary food source for the bacteria. Uh, then the 12 flasks were put into what Dawkins refers to as a shaking incubator to keep them warm and to keep the solution stirring constantly so that the bacteria, uh, bacteria was evenly distributed through the solution. And then the next day they would uh, take those original 12 flasks and draw a very small sample, one hundredth of the volume, and they would put it into a new flask with a new uh, batch of glucose based solution and start the process all over again. Now this has been going on for 21 years every single day. Think about it. 21 years and counting. So um, as Dawkins referred to them, the uh, 12 tribes of bacteria in the 12 separate flasks because um, they took they isolated I should say 12 separate bacteria strains they are all identical but they were 12 different ones and when they did the flask change every day it was always linear so if you can imagine after uh, 20 plus years there was over 7,000 flask changes. Each one of these uh, 
flask on a daily basis generated an average of six or seven generations of bacteria which would add up to uh, over 45,000 generations of bacteria. Uh, so then what they would do is uh, when they change the bacteria every day and they put the new solution or the, the new sample in the new flask the bacteria would then skyrocket because it was now put into uh, a new nutrient rich uh, solution and then it would feed the bacteria would feed off it and then eventually it would level off by the next day and the population uh, would just go along and then the next day and they just continued this day after day after day the only uh, real difference between the bacteria was uh, an inconsequential apparently difference where uh, there were two different uh, types of genes and ARA negative and an ARA positive ARA uh, and they could tell this by doing what they what scientists call plating out where they do a little uh, test in a gel to figure out uh, using color which is the negative and which is the positive so they continued this on uh, for years on end and then about um, generation 33,000 there was a drastic change in one of the so-called tribes uh, again they don't they don't mix uh, cross mix any of the bacteria solutions they're all kept uh, separate from each other so about 33,000 generations in one of the tribes makes a drastic change the uh, the the solution all of a sudden got extremely cloudy the the density of the bacteria in that solution went through the roof actually went up about six times all the other eleven bacteria uh, so-called tribes and what it turns out was that the E. coli bacteria had evolved to take uh, advantage of the um, the citrate so that was also in the sol the glucose solution the the glucose was the main uh, food source but there was also citrate in the solution and at some point the uh, this one particular sample of the bacteria had evolved so that it could feed off of the citrate as well as the glucose and therefore the whole population instead of it being this big went to this big uh, and they're still going on to this day with this experiment and it's, uh, it's one of the very uh, one really interesting example that Dawkins has spoke of in this book. Uh, there's several other experiments that he refers to that are also equally as interesting and um, uh, I'm going to do even more reading about this experiment some of these other experiments. I will link um, to this experiment and other information that is associated with it in the sidebar directly to uh, Dr. Lenski's uh, website at Michigan State University. So if you want to check it out some more yourself, there I'll give you the information, or the link I should say, to do so. I know this has been kind of long and rambling, but uh, I just found it really interesting and maybe some of you will enjoy it too. Uh, my time is starting to get short here, it's blinking at me, so um, yeah. So enjoy, uh, buy this book, or at least go to the library and get it. It's really cool so far. So we'll see you later.